Topic 8 is on binary search trees. And we're going to begin with some general facts about trees and binary trees. Here we have a couple of trees. This is on the Aea Ridge Trail on Oahu. The most general form of trees we call free trees are a type of a graph. And we're going to study graphs later, but just a quick introduction. A graph consists of a pair of sets, a set of vertices, and a set of edges. And so, for example, we might have uh, V might be the set uh, V1, V2, and uh, E might be the set V1, V2, like that. And that's an edge between V1 and V2, so we've just specified this graph right here. Graphs, vertices are drawn as nodes, and edges are drawn as lines. That's the specification of that graph. Maybe if we make this a little bit more interesting, we'll add another vertex and another edge. So there's a V3 here, and add another edge. Notice that these edges are set, so they're undirected. There's no arrows on them. So we just draw it like a line. A directed graph, so we would make these tuples with rounded you know, parentheses, and then we would consider it an arc rather than an edge from V1 to V2, for example. Um, so if this was a directed graph, it would look like this. And then you draw an edge as an arrowhead. But that's not what we're doing today. Now, what I've just shown you before I put it in the directed part is also a tree, a free tree. So let's go look at a definition, actually six definitions of free trees. So here's a notation we just introduced, and we're going to use it to define a graph, G equals VE, a finite graph with at least one vertex. And the following properties are equivalent definitions of a generalized or free tree. And you can actually prove each of these properties in sequence using the previous one as the assumptions. Um, the first definition, G is connected and has no simple cycles. So connected means that all the nodes are reachable from all other nodes. A uh, unconnected graph would be, for example, this is an unconnected graph. No simple cycles means there's nothing that looks like that, a loop. A simple cycle means we don't count going there and back again on the same edge as a cycle. Equivalent definition, G has no simple cycles and has V minus 1 edges. Okay, there's, as I've counted here, nine vertices. And if we look, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight edges. So in a tree, the number of edges is always one less than the number of vertices. And we use this fact considerably in our proofs because when we, when we prove things about processing trees, or actually graphs in general, um, if we're dealing with trees, we want to bound it based on the input size, which is going to be the number of vertices and the number of edges. Equivalent fact, you can replace the no simple cycles with connected. G is connected and has V minus 1 edges. So if you connect a graph with V minus 1 edges, you've, got, you've put in just, as, just barely enough edges to connect it. You don't have enough edges there to make it have simple cycles. Another definition, G is acyclic. There's no cycles, but if you add an edge that joins any two non-adjacent vertices, that is vertices that, that don't already have an edge between them, exactly one cycle is formed. So there's no way to add an edge in here without forming a cycle. And it will form exactly one cycle. Okay, kind of the flip side of that, G is connected, but if you delete an edge, then it becomes disconnected. So as you can see, delete any one of these edges and some node will be unreachable from some other node. Finally, every pair of vertices is connected by exactly one path. If you want to get from here to here, there's only one way to go. Of course, if that weren't true, if there was more than one path, then you would have a cycle. And that leads us back to number one. Now, in some contexts, we will, we will treat also the empty graph as a tree. This definition here requires that there be at least one vertex 
but there will be some situations where we're going to say g being the empty set of vertices and of course therefore the empty set of edges is a tree at least um, with respect to checking the base cases of recursion you know making sure that you're dealing with all input data um, you, you want to check for that in your recursive base case and also as you can see this requires that there be more than one vertex so another um, base case that we want to consider in recursion that is not included in this definition would be one vertex um, and no edges so in many settings we're also going to consider these two Okay, we'll go on to some other definitions now. Let's add a couple more simple definitions. A forest is a possibly disconnected graph, each component of which is a tree. So, for example, that's a forest. An oriented tree is a directed graph that has a designated vertex R. That's going to be the root and it's going to have exactly one oriented path between the root and any vertex V that's distinct from the root. So, like say we have V1, V2, V3, that's the root, it's a directed graph, so the other vertices are going to point to it. Remember I noted earlier on that we, when we um, represent it that way, the um, then uh, E will consist of a set of tuples or pairs that indicate the direction of the edge. So for example, um, um, V1, R, V2, R would be the tuples in here. So that's a directed graph. Now a binary tree can either be empty or it consists of a root tree single vertex called the root together with two binary subtrees that are disjoint that is they're not connected to each other and they're called the left and right subtrees so you're going to have a left subtree and a right subtree so this is a recursive definition the left subtree can be empty and the right subtree can be empty or the left subtree can be another binary tree that has its own root and its own left and right subtree. And similar over here, the right subtree can be a binary tree with a root and a left subtree and a right subtree. Of course, one of these subtrees can be empty. Could be the case that that one is empty over here and this one's empty over here, but then um, these are not empty, so you can have interesting structures like this. Um, the left could be empty and the right not empty, leading to a chain. These are all binary trees. So we're going to be interested in binary trees that are not so chainy as this, of course. We want them to kind of branch nicely like this because, as you can probably guess, since we double the number of nodes at each level, we're going to get log n, roughly speaking, height. That's going to lead to a lot of important properties of binary trees. So let's take a look at now at uh, some quantitative facts. Okay, we just saw some examples of binary trees that, in which the, each node may or may not have a left or right child. We're now going to consider a more restricted kind of binary tree, which is a full binary tree. In a full binary tree, each node is either a leaf or it has exactly two non-empty descendants. So they're both there. These are two examples of full binary trees. Um, now we're going to look at some quantitative facts about full binary trees. And by the way, we reason about full binary trees because they help give us bounds on algorithms. This is the tallest full binary tree you can make, and this is the shortest full binary tree you can make. So one fact about full binary trees is that the number of leaves is the number of internal nodes minus 1. So, for example, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six leaves, and we have one, two, three, four, five internal nodes. We've got eight leaves and seven internal nodes. The second quantitative fact is that the number of leaves 
will be at least h plus 1 at most 2 to the h. This is a, these are exemplified by the two examples here. Uh, so if the tree was cut off, say, here, the number of um, h is 0, and the number of leaves is h plus 1 is 1. If the tree were cut off here, then h is 1, and the number of leaves is 2. If it were cut off here, h is 2, and the number of leaves is 1, 2, 3, and so on. 3, number of leaves is 1, 2, 3, 4. Now down here, we have the height is 3, and 2 to the h is 8. So that's the most leaves you can have. And you can verify that it works for the other levels. OK, now let's look at the third fact. The number of internal nodes is at least h and at most to the h, that's an h, minus 1. So again, looking at the example, internal nodes are the ones that have children. So here at uh, height 5, we got at least five internal nodes. And at height 4, you can verify if it were cut off here, that would be a leaf, so it would be four internal nodes, and so on. And at most, 2 to the h minus 1. So for example here, um, 2 to the h would be 8 minus 1 is 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So we always get 2 to the h leaves and 2 to the h minus 1 internal nodes in a tree that looks like this. By the way, we might as well mention that this tree down here has a special name. This is a complete binary tree. All the levels have been uh, completed. It's a full binary tree in which all leaves have the same depth and all internal nodes have degree 2. They all have two uh, children. So let's go on to fact number 4 is a uh, total number of nodes in a tree. And what you do is just add up the last two results, h plus 1 and h. So it's at least 2h plus 1, and at most 2 to the h minus 1 and 2 to the h. If you added 2 to the h and 2 to the h, you'd get 2 times 2 to the h. So you would get 2 to the h plus 1 but you would be adding a one too many because that minus one, so we minus one. So that's two to the h plus one minus one. And you can quickly verify that this is true of our examples here. So for the first one, we have um, h is five, 10 plus one is 11, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. And here, total number of nodes is two to the h plus one minus one. So 16 minus 1 would be 15, and there are 15 nodes in this tree. So the last fact we want to have here is the height. And this one's pretty critical, so I think I want to make a little room for it. The height is at least log base 2 n plus 1 minus 1, which comes from the second example, and is at most n minus 1 over 2, which is from the first example. So of course the highest binary tree would be of height n minus 1, because you would have just a chain in the highest possible binary tree. You would just have a chain of n minus 1 edges connecting n vertices, because remember there's always one less edges than vertices in a tree. But this is a more restricted kind of binary tree. This is a full binary tree, so since we're forced to make a, a branching there, we get, rather than n minus 1 height, which would be the case if it was unrestricted, um, each case we have to knock off another node, so it's n minus 1 divided by 2. Whereas the height of the complete binary tree, the shortest you can make it by filling everything out would be log n plus 1 minus 1. So n is 15 n plus 1 is 16, the log of that is 4, minus 1 would be 3. So this concludes our introduction to trees 
and binary trees and some basic quantitative facts about them that we're going to use later on.